We've sold over $500 million online and have been in business for 10 years. And in those 10 years, we've seen a lot of changes. There's been more interest now than ever on education and information for entrepreneurship. But unfortunately, a lot of people are coming in and they just have the wrong foundations and mindset. And then they get frustrated and quit because they're listening to someone that's only two steps ahead of them instead of 10 steps ahead of them. This is chess, not checkers. For us, we're running a $65 million year business with dozens of employees. To me, selling on Amazon isn't just a hustle. I'm in the business of building empires. And there's perks that come with it, like time freedom and being able to travel and buy what you want. I just bought a G-Wagon. But the best part is helping people, not just the people on my team, but the people who really want to do this and have what it takes. So before you think about starting a business, let's get this stuff covered. There's no such thing as winners and losers, just winners and quitters. And and similar to winners and quitters, there's those that have excuses and those that are just not gonna take any excuses. And you know what? At the early stages, that's where I was. I had to convince myself that I could achieve that financial freedom. At that time, just the year prior, I had five DUIs. I lost my license for two and a half years. I had fears of starting a business. I only had $3,000 saved up and I was working a job where I was just scraping by. I barely had enough money, let alone for myself, but for my family, for my three-year-old daughter and here I was I was about to take this risk now on top of everything else that would happen in my life I was gonna take this risk and start a business well I knew that if I didn't do this then the future regret of never trying would outweigh any risk that I was going to take at that time so if I could be at that low point broke without a license not knowing if I'm gonna be able to provide for my family and still persevere and refuse to make excuses and quit I know that you can do so much more he was a piece of shit at that time. I'm even surprised he made it. Every successful business owner is resilient. They're willing to put in the work and are not afraid of failure. There's no business venture that I've participated in and I've owned multiple businesses where I haven't failed. And I failed and I failed until I began to win. It's part of the process. You have to be willing to accept failure, learn and grow from it. You have to be willing to learn. I operate a $70 million a year business and I'm still learning and investing in learning from people who are more experienced than me. Some of the top guys in the space like Tony Robbins and Warren Buffett, they're always continuing to invest in education. They're not too prideful to admit that they don't have the answers to all of their problems. If you're willing to commit to being a lifelong learner, then there's no limit to the success that you can attain. It's never too late to be this person. Whether you're somebody in your 30s, 40s, or 50s, it doesn't matter. It's all about the mindset and everyone has their individual assets and experience is yours if you're in your later ages. It makes no difference. But if you're in your 20s, you have the advantage of time, the advantage of taking more risk and failing and still being able to build a thriving business. And if you're watching this right now, you have that right mindset because you're investing your time to invest in your future. Here's point number two. You have to be willing to put your money where your mouth is. And if you can't risk money, then you have to risk your time. When we first started, we would question spending a couple thousand dollars on products to sell. Now, we have a $2.5 million a month budget and are spending $100,000 a day. And recently, we spent $50,000 on education because we're always learning. Successful business owners put their money where their mouth is as long as there's an ROI. And if you don't have money, you have time. So instead of waiting wasting that time, go out and get a job or go and invest in yourself. Either way, you're gonna have to sacrifice time or sacrifice money in order to build a successful business. So you can't avoid startup costs and time invested in your business. They are requirements in order to grow. Time freedom and financial freedom doesn't necessarily mean that you have tons of time. It means you have the freedom to come and go and make the decisions with your time that you desire. And that is earned. And none of this stuff is going to be free. You have have to invest in order to get there. And it's not going to be easy, but it's 100% possible. The goal might not be passive income. The goal should be to build a life that you never feel like you have to take a vacation from. Point number three, you need to have a long-term growth mindset. It's a marathon, not a sprint. Reed Hastings might not be a name that you recognize, but I guarantee you've used his products. Back in 1997, he started a DVD rental service. But after a few years in business and struggling to make a profit, he decided to take a risk and pivot. And in 2007, 
10 years later, Netflix became a streaming service. And since then, he has completely demolished the DVD rental service and has built one of the largest streaming platforms in the world. And so here's the point. Any successful entrepreneur is going to know that there's gonna be a lot of risk and you need to reinvest in yourself and your future growth because things are constantly changing. Now, today, more than ever. You need to be able to plan, but more importantly, you need to be able to take risk and do A-B testing. Reed Hastings wasn't no he didn't know how big streaming was going to be, but he was willing to take a risk and try streaming services while other large corporations were stuck in their way. They were thinking about how they could be relevant today while Reed was thinking about how he could be relevant 10, 20 years and beyond. But the reason Reed and Netflix were able to succeed is because they had SOPs and systems in place which allowed them to integrate quickly and efficiently with those ideas. And that leads us to point number four. You have to build out SOPs. You're only as valuable as your systems. People quote this all the time, and it's because it's a great fucking quote by James Clear. You don't rise to the level of your goals, you fall to the level of your systems. You need to master this. If you have incredible systems and a great team to execute on them, there's no level of success that you can't achieve. Let me show you some of the stuff that we've built. So right now we're in the upstairs offices of our 50,000 square foot building here. and. Over to the right, we have a buying department, which early on, it was just myself and Eric who were doing all the buying. Now, if you come this way, what you're gonna find is our warehouse processes all built out, starting from a garage early on. But this is why it's so important as an operator in those early days to understand every single facet of your business so you're able to build out processes and then teach others to implement those processes and then they teach others how to do those active roles. So you may not want to have a 50,000 square foot warehouse, but you need to have the processes and systems to visualize the company that you want to build out. We've been talking a lot about systems, processes, and operations, but you need to be able to build out teams that have systems so that way they can execute together. We have a team for receiving. We have a team for prepping. We have a buying team. We have a metal out team. All these teams need to be integrated with automations, tools, content, improvements in order to all be synced up and be able to execute together as one system. And this all takes continuous improvement and further implementation. If you're somebody that loves problem solving, somebody who loves puzzles, building a business is the right fit for you. Point number five, you always have to be thinking bigger. You have to reinvest into yourself in order to get that next level of growth that you're looking to attain. In the beginning, it's a grind. You'll probably be making a little bit of money, not putting much money back into your pocket and reinvesting all of your profits back into the company to allow it to continue to grow. And then you'll hit the next level where you can begin to start paying yourself some funds and you begin to feel some of that time and financial freedom that you're chasing, but you know you're not quite there yet. And then there's the third level where you have true time and financial freedom, which typically happens after years of investment into your business and into yourself. At first, early on, you're thinking about how can I survive? In the long run, when you're thriving, you're figuring out what's next because you can't get complacent. And that will happen at times and you may see your business plateau and there's that hard point that happens in your business where your business starts going faster than you, where you may have to make that hard decision and start searching outside of yourself for what that solution is. You always have to be willing to invest in yourself. Read books, invest in communities, go to in-person events and network with other people in the business you're looking to grow in and learn from experts in the space who are 10 steps ahead of you. If you want to learn more about starting a business, we have a ton of free content and resources that you could jump into and start learning today. It's never too late. It's never too early. Or if you're somebody who's already started selling on Amazon and looking to scale, DM us online. We'd love to take your business to the next level.